Hey guys, the homepage of your e-commerce store has to do a lot of different actions, right? For a lot of different types of users. So what is really important to an e-commerce? Well, that's what we're going to discuss today. We're going to go through some different examples. I'm going to try to give you some theory as well as looking at some really nice looking ones. So hopefully we can all improve our e-commerce homepages and leads to happier users and more conversions or more sales. Let's get in. So no surprises possibly, we're just going to start with Amazon, but it's only because I'm going to focus on navigation to start with. It's a really key one that can be overlooked. There's three basic ways that people review or navigate around a website, right? So the first one, if we can go on here, is they'll go for drop downs and they'll go for the menu system and they'll navigate the menu system based on what they can see from there. They'll navigate through the drop downs and go from there. And that's one way. The second way is they will scroll down the page and they will navigate based on what they can see in front of them. So this is a really key one, especially on mobile, that people can sometimes ignore the mobile and they'll just basically navigate down the website based on what they can see. So if they see something of interest to them halfway down the page, they'll click on that. If they get all the way down to the bottom, and they've not seen anything of interest and we've lost them. So especially for a home page, what we refer to as is signposting. So signposting, how we're going to push the user around the website is really, really key. It's not a case of just going, here's our top sellers, like to get into it. We need to consider what might be really important to them. So we've obviously got the main menu and we've obviously got, as we scroll down, what are we signposting? And then the reason I've chosen Amazon is the obvious one of just search, right? So typing in, navigating with the website here. Now, um, the way this is purposely done is that there's a lot of contrast to the Amazon one. There's a big white bar right in the middle of the page with a dark menu, so our eyes are really drawn to the search bar. Search bars can be really hidden away. And if you're an e-commerce store selling a lot of products, make the search stand out. I'm also gonna show you some examples of some decent search tools as well. But really, those are really key elements to make sure stand out, right? Are we making the menu easy to use? Is the search obvious and easy to navigate through? And are we signposting the user down the page to different options as we go? Now there's loads of different search tools that we can use. I've just got a demo one loaded up here for you to see uh, from a company called Boost. So Boost Search is a Shopify kind of plugin that you can add in. So you know these things don't have to be expensive to really make the life of the user easier. But you'll see here that if I then go on here and you'll see that I've kind of tested this already. If I type in the word test, um, you'll see that it then gives me some options to say, did you mean vest? If you meant vest, here's some different options. So you can see how that works quite nicely. So it kind of corrects what it is. If I type in black, it works. You'll then see it's got some potential pages I might have, but it's also showing me the different products I can have, or I can get to all of them. So just having a little bit of more information to really signpost the user where they might go is a really great way of doing it. And you'll see here that when I first even type in it, we can have trending products that pull in, we can have some popular searches, we can have our recent searches that pull in. All of these things just really, really help the user. And that's why search becomes really, really critical for e-commerce stores. So if you haven't got one in place or you're hiding it away, or you're just using a really base version, do consider maybe one of these third-party systems. It's a great way to increase usability and then therefore conversion rate. Next, we're going to look at hierarchy of the page, and I'm going to use Beauty Bay as the example here. I'm trying to make sure I'm using a few different examples as we go, right? So it's not all just the one style of product. But you'll see from a hierarchy point of view, we have the top of the page here, which is very much on a particular offer, right? So save an extra 15% and then getting the user to push them in. Uh, going back to what I was referencing with Amazon, they do have this lovely large search bar. I think that could, the contrast could be a little bit higher, but I think just the sheer size of it really makes it stand out. But going back to the overall hierarchy is if I don't click on that opening thing, as I scroll down, there's then three kind of options they're trying to push me to here, right? Like then these are three new things they're introducing into the company. It makes sense they want them fairly high up the page to say, these are brand new, why not check them out? Now, for some users, that will be really interesting, but for others, they'll already know potentially what they're after. As I've mentioned already, some people will go straight for search, some people will use the menu, but others navigate based on scrolling down the page. And that's why then having a hierarchy or a section dedicated to brands for this particular company makes a lot of sense. Now, for you, it might be that you have your categories listed here. So you might have your newest items at the top. You then might have some categories and then you refer to as your best sellers. They're obviously calling these these flying off the shelves, but these would be your best sellers. And these make sense to signpost people around 
So here's my newest thing that I'm offering. Do you want to look at the categories and do you look like them in your own time? Or do you just want to see what we're selling loads of? It's that kind of idea of going on Netflix and not being sure what to watch. So instead you end up going to the most popular and you just pick from there. It, it makes life easier. They do have some other elements on here. So this is more the education sector, right? Like how do you get your smoky eye? How do you get more radiant skin? Um, there are some other elements on here. We even have some kind of social proofing with referencing kind of influencers who are using this. But I would say, and you also have that further down the page here, which is quite nice. But this overall hierarchy, a little bit higher on the page is what's really, really key. So are we allowing users to get to our newest products? Are we allowing them to get to our best sellers? Are we pushing them around the categories? And also if you have a split between like male and female um, with some of your clothing that you might have, are we making that really clear as well? So you see that a lot on other websites. I'm gonna use Gymshark as an example shortly, and they have a nice clean, obvious split to make life easier for everyone. So check those out as well. Now this may seem really obvious, but I wanna make sure it's included, right? Make sure your homepage and your entire site works really well on a mobile. Um, depending on what you're obviously selling, this is going to be one of the main ways that people come to your website. Um, I love Bay Bellroy. I have a Bellroy wallet and I kind of wanted to use them um, as an example. There's a couple of really nice things that they do at the top of their page here. You obviously have these sliding options with the Meet the Superstars and they're very much pushing users into their best sellers straight away, which is really nice. I think the other area that I really like is this visual kind of category. So I can then swipe through these. I've got a small image as an indication of what it is. It doesn't feel overly busy or too fussy because they're nice and easy to interact with. From a finger point of view, that's another really key one, not just for e-commerce homepage, but any site is making sure the buttons, the things that the, in, the user can interact with are big enough for our fingers. And then as we go down, they're just pushing people to different avenues. This is what I referenced before with signposting. So, hey, we sell bags, why not check out the bags? Let's push them there. Did you know we also do belts? Push them over here. Did you know we have a new venture that we do? Let's have a look at that. We're very much pushing the user around. And if we get them to the bottom of the page and they're not signed up yet, maybe we should push them to a video to learn a little bit more about us. So they're really considering this. They're also considering at all points that they're adding social proofing always here. So we can always see that they are 4.8 stars, which is a really nice little feature. But yeah, just consider that from a mobile point of view. You know, how easy it is to navigate? Does it feel too clunky? Have we given things a little bit of room to breathe with the white space? That's really key. And especially for our fingers, are we considering how easy things are to click and interact with? For anyone that's watched some of my other videos, I do reference Gymshark a few times just for really great options that they have from a homepage point of view. There's again, right at the top of the page, we're being very clear on what we're offering here. It's 20% off, and then you get straight to a signpost and use it instantly, right, with women or men, and then two very clear imagery on the right side of where the image is. So that's very clear. As we scroll down, we're getting straight into some options, and then some other really nice ideas are shortening that user journey. So the fact actually from here, from the homepage, I can literally choose this top in extra small and buy it there and then, is a huge win. We're really shortening that journey. The other thing which is nice is I can slide through these on a mobile phone. I can swipe through these if I put this into mobile mode. So there's lots of things that work really nicely. As we get further down, we're allowing a lot of room to breathe so the user can navigate, doesn't feel overfaced, and then we can get down into some of our next options that we have on here and we can cycle through those. Again, little interactions, just being able to see the front and the back of the t-shirts is a really nice feature just to be able to see those elements. And then they also have these larger sections which allow, I guess, more imagery to be put in. So they're really nice as well. You can also flick between these, you can get to viewing all, you can see individual ones, you can buy, everything is really well thought out. They obviously do have this search bar, which I've referenced already in the video. And again, I'd probably say that could be a little bit larger, it could stand out a lot more. But one thing that they do really nicely is they do have nice, obvious, clean menu systems. This design on the right-hand side where it says featured is a nice little visual addition as well to make it really clear what we can potentially interact with. And then everything is sectioned out, so it's dead easy to understand. It's really, really easy to work through. I could make this video probably three or four times longer with lots of different examples, but hopefully some of the key metrics or the key things that we should be doing on an e-commerce homepage is starting to come through. You know, we need to consider the three different ways that people navigate around our site. 
you need to really consider the overall hierarchy and the hierarchy for everyone is slightly different, right? Do we want to push bestsellers first? Do we want to push categories first? How early do we want to show logos to show who we work with? How often do we want to show other information like blogs? You'll know based on your user types if those information are important. If we looked back at Beauty Bay, they had a blog section on the homepage teaching people how to apply their makeup or how to use that. That makes sense as part of that user journey. Whereas someone like Gymshark is very clear, it's like some clothing, you don't necessarily need a blog to do that. So therefore it doesn't make sense to waste valuable real estate on your homepage dedicated to pushing people off there. So you'll know what they need. And if you don't know what you need, speak to your users and find out what's really key for them. What you can now do is you can check out our video just over here, which is our most recent one. And if you guys have any websites you'd like me to review or any particular topics, please let me know. I try to keep everything around e-commerce or SaaS, but if you've got anything else you want us to have a look at, please let me know. We'll speak soon. Bye.